the middle of uh, the 50s, this was uh, after the state of emergency had been uh, ended because of the problems we had during the fight for independence. There were many physically disabled people. Some were burnt and disfigured during some of the problems, like there was what they called the Larry Massacre, where a whole village, you know, was set on fire. And there were young people who came out disfigured, but they needed help. The Association for the Physically Disabled of Kenya, APDK, is a non-profit making charitable NGO which was established in 1958 with the objective of providing rehabilitation services to persons with disabilities. At the same time, polio was ravaging in this country. So there were many disabled people. Most of the time they sat around street corners with a little bowl begging. We thought we must get them some kind of trade, something long lasting. There was the British Red Cross, which was operating again at the hospital. It had a small place. Some lady there suggested that we could train these disabled people, those who had hands, in shoe repairing and making shoes. But to do that, we needed an association. So the Association for the Physically Disabled was formed in June 1958. I was among the founders. The National Office and the Nairobi Branch Rehabilitation Center with a large orthopedic and wheelchair workshop are located in Lower Kabete in the western suburbs of Nairobi along Waiyaki Way. APDK works in collaboration with the government. The Ministry of Health has attached rehabilitation offices to APDK branches. These dedicated staff are the backbone of the services provided by APDK to people with disabilities countrywide. The original approach was based on charity, but over the last 50 years, APDK has undergone a considerable transformation. We shifted to the medical model of rehabilitation in the 70s up to the 90s, where the focus was basically on uh, providing surgery, therapy services, uh, orthopedic appliances to enable disabled people to participate in their communities. However, in the last five years, APDK has now shifted into the social model of rehabilitation based on the UN Convention for the Rights of People with Disabilities. The mission of APDK is to enable people with disabilities to overcome their limitations and empower them socially and economically to become integrated members of their communities and build their self-esteem. Yeah, I was attacked by Polly at the age of six in uh, the rural home. Um, identified by Kenya Red Cross Society, and then I was brought to APDK, uh, got some rehabilitation. Then I got enrolled in school in Salvation Army Joy Town, up to O level. And uh, after O level, I did a number of courses. And eventually, after after even those courses, uh, basically APDK even organised for my for for my sponsorship when I was a young boy. And it's a big honor to be working for uh, this organization. Our programs are supported by various uh, development partners, the biggest being the Christian Blind Mission of Germany, who have supported us over the last 30 years, Kindernothilfe, Bread for the World, and uh, many other donors, loc like local service clubs, Rotarians, Lions. USAID has been a tremendous supporter and uh, the Latter-day Saints charities of the U.S. are sponsoring many wheelchairs and many corporate uh, supporters like Safaricom, Celtel, Banks uh, have assisted us to provide uh, uh, these life-changing services. At the coast, APDK runs a 60-bed rehabilitation clinic, the Bombolulu Handicraft Center and the Likoni Furniture Workshop, 
which train and employ 190 persons with disabilities. The Bombolulu Workshops and Cultural Centre were established in 1971 and taken over by APDK in 1987 after it had collapsed. The centre provides skills training to challenge persons to enable them to earn a living. The programme currently employs 200 persons with disabilities in the production of high-quality crafts which are exported to 20 countries and sold to tourists. The attached cultural centre is a major tourist attraction and depicts traditional lifestyle, offers cultural performances and runs a restaurant. The centre is famous for its fashion show which is performed by models including persons with disabilities in tourist hotels. Employees are earning fair wages, receive free housing and social benefits and have proven that if given an opportunity, people with disabilities can excel and perform highly skilled work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The Port Ritz Rehabilitation Clinic was established in 1971 and with a capacity of 80 beds, provided comprehensive medical rehabilitation services to children with physical disabilities. The clinic, which undertakes orthopedic survey, provides therapy services and produces walking appliances. The microfinance programs in Mombasa was established in 1997 with the aim of economically empowering persons with disabilities who have no opportunity of securing employment. So far, disabled people have received training and loans and established their own small-scale businesses. With a 90% success rate, the program has achieved exceptional results and ensures that the clients become respected members of their communities. He saw his friend uh, who was doing the same business, which made him have interest to do the same business as his friend because he was prospering and he found it interesting for himself. What really encourages me is what the people themselves do in the program, how they work hard and succeed in the type of businesses that they do. We have so many water sellers in the program because piped water in uh, most parts of uh, the rural parts of Mombasa is very expensive to install. So most of the disabled persons prefer doing this kind of business because mm -hmm. it's very simple. The APDK Mobile Clinic, which is an extension of the rehabilitation clinic, reaches 90 stations in rural areas and creates awareness and diagnoses persons with disabilities for respective service provision. Parents of the persons with disabilities are trained on how to care and support for their children. The clinic also organizes for clinical camps where people are trained on health education, awareness creation, and clients are measured and fixed with supportive appliances. In many areas at the coast region, Beliefs are still prevalent and many parents take their children to witch doctors for cure. The mobile clinic ensures communities are educated on available rehabilitation services to prevent stigmatization. Uh, the organization sensitizes and lobbies all the harms of the government, including the National Council, to look into ways and means where disability issues must be entrenched into the uh, planning uh, units. The APDK with the Minister of Health and the Health, Health NGO Network are already involved in the planning of the annual operation plan four, which will see the integration of disability activities in all the aspects of health service provision at the Minister of Health, which will require also funding to be improved and support the persons with disability. Since 1963, the National Office and Nairobi branch of APDK were located at APDK House on Lagos Road behind a Kamba bus building. While we were operating, training disabled people in the British Red Cross shop at Kenyatta, we came to the city council where they had a clinic at Lagos Road to now to try and help the children there. So we formed what we call Children's Orthopedic Clinic. We were able to be allocated a plot where the clinic was, where we built ourselves the clinic for the children, the workshop for repairing wheelchairs, and offices for ourselves. In the year 2002, APDK received funds from the Christopher Blinden Mission, the German government, 
and Cedar Canada to develop a new rehabilitation centre. The rehabilitation clinic was officially opened in the year 2003 by His Excellency President Mwai Kibaki. The clinic benefits people of all ages and improves one's functions whether the disability resulted from birth defects, accidents or trauma, ageing or any other cause. The mandate of the clinic is to rehabilitate persons with various disabilities that come to us either through self-referrals or through referrals from other collaborators. The physiotherapy unit uses different approaches in management of disability like therapeutic exercises, electrotherapy and soft tissue manipulation. This rehabilitative approaches help prevent joint stiffness, constructures, muscle wasting and improves general physical and mental activity. The physiotherapy department of the clinic deals with patients with various disabilities. Like you can see in our bag lab, we have children with cerebral palsy. When they come to us, they are not able to do many functions of daily living. We put them on an exercise program, like you can see Edith on the mat, with a physiotherapist doing stretchings that will help prevent contractures prevent muscle stiffness and improve her general circulation, as well as stimulate her brain to be able to, to cope with the various functions. Then from the mat, we progress to the walking. When Edith came here, she couldn't make any steps. She didn't have head control. Like you can see now, she's on the parallel bus and is struggling to walk. And eventually, she will improve on this. My daughter was diagnosed with CP is since birth. We brought her to a PDK. She's improved a lot. She can communicate, she can feed herself, she can walk with assistance, she can stand also with assistance, and she, she's become more bright socially. Occupational therapy is a rehabilitative therapy that uses activities of daily living to help people with physical and mental disabilities achieve maximum functions and independence. OT is geared to a particular functional level and interest of the individual. Some children, that is children with cerebral palsy, have difficulty in feedings. The parents are taught a home program that will improve postural alignment and stability, proper positioning that promotes oral motor function. In the clinic we also have other activities such as the orthopedic surgeon whereby most of our clients that we see and we, we need, see the need of being evaluated by orthopedic surgeon for further management, we usually refer them to the orthopedic surgeon. Also have the neurosurgeon clinic. He usually come here to, lef to review clients with neurological problems such as the hydrocephalus and the spinal bifida. There are other conditions that can be managed and treated if early intervention is done, such as club feet. Club foot is a condition where the foot turns inwards, thus making the foot a club, and hence the name club foot. For early intervention, the child is taken through serial casting, foot abduction, brace and splint. For rigid causes, tenotomy is performed. However, for children between the ages of 2 to 18 years who do not receive early treatment, surgical interventions are done. Club foot is a very uh, difficult case in managing because it has got a very high rate of what we call recurrency. If it is not well managed, it goes back to its original deformity form. So that kind of recurrency is eliminated if there is cooperation between the parents and the officers, the rehabilitation officers dealing with the case so that the child is frequently brought as required by us as rehabilitation officers. So we are doing the advocacy, talking to the uh, midwives, talking to uh, the people who are in uh, maternal child health, so that these cases are referred to APDK in general, in all our branches when they are still young. We are working in partnership with Kiwa International Hospital, which do provide us with some of the plasters in the management of children below the age of two years. Parkland Cerebral Palsy Unit was an initiative of APDK with funds from the former Mobile Oil Company. It is a government public school managed by the Nairobi City Council. It takes care of children with cerebral palsy with the aim to prepare them for mainstream education. 
The unit has had a lot of support from the children in the regular unit and the coexistence making education an interesting part of growth to the child with special needs. Each child follows a different program and in regard to that as teachers we have individualized educational programs that is IEPs for each child which caters for the academic, social, emotional and personal needs of each child. The National Office and Nairobi Branch Rehabilitation Centre run a large orthopaedic and wheelchair workshop located in Lower Kabete in the western suburbs of Nairobi along Waiakiwe. We are now standing in the Department of Orthopaedic Technology, the fitting and measurement room. This is the unit whereby we receive our clients. They are thoroughly assessed by our clinical team. It is in the same department whereby we, we fit the, the products that have been produced by our team and we also train uh, our customers and our clients on how to use the various products. We are in the leather section, and in the leather section, we are making products that are made out of leather, and they could be special footwears, it could be padding of calipers. Most of the users of surgical boots are not able to use the normal footwear, so the shoes must be specifically done to fit them. Moving from the leather section, we now move on to the metal section, whereby we have orthopedic products, orthopedic appliances that are made out of metallic material, mild steel, and the whole idea is to ensure that you can actually be able to adapt the shoe to the user by fitting in some stay wraps or some backstops. Currently, we are now able to make products that are made out of plastic, and specifically, we are using the polypropylene material. Every client who comes to us is assessed by our qualified orthopedic technologists and measurements are taken. The cast is modified with the intentions of correcting the deformity in question before the whole thing is now taken to the oven for molding purposes. The wheelchair workshop is considered to be the largest producer of appropriate wheelchair in East and Central Africa. Over 12,000 various orthopedic appliances are produced every year. The greatest demand is on wheelchairs, tricycles, special seats and crutches. Currently, the department has been able to avail its products both locally and international. For example, in Sudan, Somalia, Uganda, Tanzania, Eritrea, among others. The success of the production unit is associated to a team of qualified and committed staff and our development partners. Most of the products are manufactured after a careful clinical assessment of our clients by our clinical team. The workshop has also been a training ground for technicians from other programs involved in wheelchair production. For sure, as per my personal experience, okay, it's my first time to lay hands on it, but I've seen that it has, uh, it has come at the right time. A situation where I've, been, where, I've, where I've been encountering challenges on working from one place to another. This particular, I think it is the solution to that. Community-based rehabilitation program is one of the programs of APDK that was started in 1998 in Mombasa and subsequently in other upcountry branches. This was to work with the communities who could not access the rehabilitation services at the institutional levels. The community program is implemented particularly in Nairobi and Mombasa. In urban settings, the program covers the informal settlements. The Nairobi program covers Mukuru and Pumwani areas. Community-based rehabilitation is uh, having rehabilitation programs within the community where the clients are in their homes, within their settings. It's also about mainstreaming the disability issues within the existing mainstream activities without setting up special structures for persons with disability. It's all about building capacity for people within the community in terms of rehabilitation, their socio-economic life, and also to have a policy agenda for the persons with disability within the community. Vile nilikuja kutabua shilika, likuwa daktali ya likuwa nasukuka huku kwa kijiji, akitafuta wa mama wenye watoto wako na shida. Lakini ya kacha ripoti niambiwe, kuna mgeni. Diyo kesho yake ya kakuja, haka nikuta, 
akanielezea ile kazi wanafanyaga kaniambia anafanyaga kazi na shirika ya IPDK kushughulikia watoto wale mavu akanielezea yeye kazi yake ni kufanya mazoezi anasaidia wanasaidiaga mzazi kufanyia mtoto mazoezi bure ndio kum, yani kumpunguzia gharama ya hospitali mimi nilifurahia juu wakati mwingine siku anaenda hospitali juu ya kukosa pesa sasa alikuanzia hapo akakuja akanifanyia akani assessment sasa akaanzia masoesi hapo ndio tulianzia tulianzia na naye na hapo ndio nilimjulia amenifundisha sana jinsi nitakuwa nikifanyia mtoto wakati yeye ayuko jua linielezea yeye anakujaga mara moja kwa wiki na ile zile ziku mingi mimi ndio huwa na mtoto we call it comprehensive community based rehabilitation because it takes care of all aspects of human life we do not only focus on the medical aspect of persons with disability, but we also take care of their social life, their economical life, and also their surroundings. So we work with all aspects of a human life in day-to-day -day living. For sustainability of the program, we've been working closely with the community committee rehabilitation. This committee is, uh, is uh, composed of uh, village elders, government officials, teachers, church ministers and uh, parents of children with disabilities and persons with disabilities. The main thing for this committee is uh, for them to be able to take care of the running of uh, and the advocacy of issues of disability if APDK faces out so that we empower the community to make disability issue a mainstream agenda in all levels of discussion for development. We also have a committee that we call MUDA. MUDA is Maungano uh, Yawalemavu Mukuru, and this one is for the microcredit program. We are now at a stage of training them to be able to run the microcredit scheme themselves. At this particular moment, they are the ones who approve for the loans and also train the others. And those are all because of uh, we want sustainability on exit of APDK. Most of them are persons with disability adults and we also have parents of children with disabilities. And this program was started in order to improve the life of the child within the community. So the first thing is you must show uh, improved life standards of the child at, uh, when you are in the microcredit program. Future challenges that I see is uh, about uh, mainstreaming disabilities completely because if we see the informal settlement, it's, uh, the environment is not friendly for persons with disability. The schools, the learning institutions, the attitudes of people around in the community is still quite uh, a challenge to, we need to work on because the acceptance is there, but uh, we've integrated very few st students in school. And this is because the attitude is these children cannot learn. But the experience is they can learn and they can perform. So uh, we are saying that uh, disability be, be, main, be made a developmental agenda in all levels of policy making in the country so that everybody would embrace disability service as part of everyday life. In 2002, parents in Mukuru came together and started a daycare centre which over the years evolved and became an early childhood preparation centre. The centre prepares children for integration into formal schools. I didn't have a child, I didn't have a child. I didn't have a child, I didn't have a child. I didn't have a child, I didn't have a child. Shirika ya epinini ya wale mafu na imefuwa azazi wa mejiunga pamoja wa mefungua shule kama hii ya daycare. I identified the children in the year 2003 and we identified them in their homes, in the community and started with therapy. In the year 2004, they joined a daycare in the village where they were going for their school. Later, in the year 2007, they joined St. Elizabeth Lunga Lunga Primary School in pre-unity classes, where today they are in class one. Since not all the teachers have learned about disability, in classes they could find it hard. But later, the children and the teachers and the school as a whole, they came to accept the children. And that is how they are in the school up to today. And there is hope 
in future the also other children can join the school and be in that school instead of children with a disability being taken to special schools outside their catchment areas. Community-based rehabilitation also trains local artisans in the making of supportive devices for the low-income earners who cannot afford high-end products. We identify the local artisans through a criteria that uh, that person must, uh, must have uh, a skill on carpentry, but specifically a disabled person, a parent of child with disability. The kind of work they do is the, the Hyperbricket uh, Mobility Aids, but first through they, under, they undergo a training first on, uh, to get the skill of uh, fabricating special seats. Community-based rehabilitation has enabled persons with disabilities in the informal settlements. Esther Wanjiko, who was rehabilitated by APDK, later got a loan which enabled her to start a cattle-keeping business. She gets up to 10 litres of milk and then sells it to the hotels. She started with one cow and currently she has increased to three and she also does some farming. Okay, <laughs> Dagurida Kamasini get a go money maker. Kakuri Maboga. Nigata Nunaka and Gota could have a sisu. He had a bogan, he had done, he had a Kuman of the Vinaji Nanya Naguka Girekiruni Ru. Ruakere daheo, Dagurire Nobe, Nanga Benemasiona, Nituti, Nidiri, Wangobe, Nahiro Gatatu, Diragura Masini Yaguza Bagiaki. There has been the formation of self-help groups in order to help in the alleviation of poverty in the slums. Members can borrow from and start their own businesses and discuss the development self-driven agendas. We say in SSG we have a concept, we say when you empower the woman, you've empowered an entire generation. So we help the women so that you can help their children. We empower them politically, economically and socially. The rehab committee in the, in the community, they do a very big role. They bring all together the parents of the disabled. They talk with them. After that, when they come together, is when they, they will know which, which difficulties the parents face. Kwa selekale, mimi nime sacha kuliwa kama committee la pesa la CDF sasa niko ndani yake hapo wale mabu sasa wamekumbukwa na serikali nikiwa hapo ni bahati mzuri sababu ile mahitaji ama shita ina, itakuwa ina ina, ina sumbuanga wale mabu saiti kwa kijiji itakuwa saa nyingine naongelea ni kama na watetea kidogo wao wanakumbukwa na serikali the association has been working with the administration since 2006 and they have been giving the community members wheelchairs. They also move from house to house working with the mothers of disabled children. They have formed groups that empower the mothers in these areas and have also provided office space for the association within the slums since they are giving services to the community. Actually, BDK is an association which we are working with as a government of Kenya in Kiambio. Uh, it's a very good organization it's dealing with the disability on the ground. Now what I've seen is, uh, as you can look around, you can see so many people with disabilities. They are now coming in the open. They are now able to come and associate with other people freely, without fear, until they are now able to look away for their own needs, rather than being dependent on other people. So that is one of the, or two of the achievements that we have seen. 
Uh, we have now also had um, children going to school because now they are being accepted. They can be integrated in other normal schools. When you are a disabled person, you need special uh, vehicles. Like now if you want to go to town, these vehicles that are just here on the road, they are there for normal people. We don't have a vehicle which is specially meant for these people around here. That is one challenge. Two, even the toilets, and even in my office here, it's difficult. A person with a wheelchair cannot go in unless it's lifted. So these are some of the challenges we are trying to address. We found it so necessary that we bring the services of ABDK closer to the people. That's why this is a government facility. That's why we set aside a small portion and we gave them an office. That's why we are having an office for ABDK here. Because we realize with ABDK closer to the people, the services they need will reach them earlier. What we are saying is we should work together as partners, recognizing that disability issues are rights issues and they are human rights issues and so everybody should work towards the rights of persons with disability. So APDK stands for empowerment, skills development and offering opportunities so that uh, challenged people can uh, enjoy their lives like any other Kenyan. APDK would like to ensure that there is affirmative action so far as representation in uh, uh, parliament, in civic and whatnot, so that a certain percentage of membership must be of people with disabilities. These are the sort of things that uh, we want, not only here, but in East Africa and Africa as a well. whole.